In this video, we are going to look at file inclusion vulnerability. The line of the video is first, what is file inclusion vulnerability? Second, type of file inclusion vulnerability, local file inclusion and remote file inclusion. Third, the demo of both LFI and RFI using DVWA. And in last, real life reports at HackerOne. Also, in this video, I will introduce you with OWASP, which stands for Open Web Application Security Project. So, the official website of OWASP is www.owasp.org. So, here we are on the website of OWASP. OWASP is a project run by security community to help the web application developer in developing more secure web application by providing very useful information about security bugs or vulnerabilities. We will learn about LFI and RFI through OWASP website. So here is the OWASP page of LFI which is local file inclusion. So let's read what OSP say about LFI. Local file inclusion also known as LFI is the process of including files that are already locally present on the server through the exploiting of vulnerability inclusion procedures implemented in the application. What are they trying to say is when a web application is developed in such a way that a file which is stored on local server is included using include function of the programming language or scripting language and when this include function is not properly implemented or the checking on this function is not done properly then attacker can take advantage of this function by including some other sensitive file located on the local server and attacker can read this sensitive file also this is all what they trying to explain you in this page there is also a page for remote file inclusion remote file inclusion is also the same the only difference is file that is included is on the remote server it is not present on the local server remote server means on the other website as you can see this link the file which is included is on different website if you did not get what i'm trying to explain don't worry i'll give you a demo of lfi and rfi which will give you more clarity so here is the owasp website you can explore it by yourself at some other time now Let's see the demo of both LFI and RFI. Start your exam and run these two services, Apache Web Server and MySQL Database. Then go to your local host and start DBWA. Let's log in with username admin and password password. See at your left section. Before starting with file inclusion, we go to at DBWA security. Because we are at learning phase, we are going to select low security on this dvwa click on submit and it will be submitted now go to file inclusion if you are seeing this warning then don't worry this is for rfi when we look at rfi we will sort it out so let's see what is local file inclusion now at this page you are seeing that there are three files which says file 1.php file 2.php and file php if I click on file1.php, I'll see a file which says hello admin your end IP address. So this section is nothing but it is a file which is included in this DVWA web application. So the functionality of the web application is this website is including a file which is stored at local server. Fine. If I click on file2. This section shows me another file which says I need a password 8 character long and so on. If I click on file 3 then this web application is including third file. So this section is nothing but it is a file which is included using some include function of the programming language. And as you can see this parameter page parameter is taking input as a file name. So if I say file2.php, it will include file2. So this parameter is not sanitized properly in this case. Let's see if it can include some other sensitive file. So for that, for learning purpose, let's go to our XAMPP directory 
and in that XAMPP directory we have stdocs folder and in that stdocs folder we have dbwa-master so let's open text editor this is only for learning purpose so if I create a web page which says you should not read this file fine so if I save it on stdocs only by renaming it sensitive.php let's save it so I create a file create a PHP file which is a sensitive file this is only for learning and understanding purpose so say this is my local server and at this server I have a sensitive PHP file which should not be read by any other person now go back to your dbwa so using this parameter if I include this sensitive file then this file will be shown on the screen and this is a sensitive file this file should not be seen by every other person so if I enter dot dot slash this dot dot slash double dot slash means one directory back so if we are at this directory see we are at dbw-master and inside that we have a directory vulnerabilities and inside that we have a directory fi so first go one directory back which is from fi to vulnerabilities then another directory back which is from vulnerabilities to dbw-master and from that directory we are going to dbw-a to htdocs and in that directory we have sensitive page that we had created sensitive.php as soon as I click enter the file is included and it says I am a sensitive file and using this file inclusion I read the sensitive file so this is LFI now if I go back to OWASP page you can see it is not only limited with reading sensitive data this can lead to something as outputting the content of the file but depending on the severity it can also lead to code execution on the web server code execution on the client side such as javascript which can lead to other attacks such as cross site scripting which we see in later videos now let's see a demo of rfi for starting RFI we have to first allow the URL include function for allowing this URL include we have to go to our XAMPP directory now if you are using Windows then you have to go to your C drive or the drive in which operating system is installed and inside that drive there will be a folder of XAMPP and inside that XAMPP folder there will be a file php.ini and for Ubuntu users we have go to back our lamp directory and inside that directory we have etc directory and inside that directory we have a php.ini file so we have to change this php.ini file we open it with editor if you are windows user please open this file using your notepad and search for allow underscore url as you can see this is allow underscore url include so it is off right now we will on it so that we can perform RFI now I have on it save it and close it there is one thing we also have to do in Ubuntu system is we have to change this php.ni permission so for changing permission we have to right click and open in terminal and type c s u d o sudo chmod triple seven and the php dot ini enter the password now this will change the permission and now we can edit this file if you are not able to edit this file then please change your permission of this file so please change the permission of this file and then edit the file now we have to restart our XAMPP software again first stop the mysql database service then stop the apache web service we will start it again 
and then the changes will occur. Now refresh the page and you'll see the error warning gone. So for RFI, what we can do is for say we can include another web page which is not on the local server for say some Wikipedia page. So this is the Wikipedia page on RFI. If I copy this page and paste it here, this parameter which is not checked properly. If I paste it here, then this Wikipedia page gets included in this page. So this is RFI, remote file inclusion, a file which is not located at local server, but it is located at some other remote server. We can include that file also. So this is the difference between LFI and RFI. So if I go to OSP RFI page, you can see here, this is a vulnerable host website and this parameter file is vulnerable and here we input some malicious page which is on some different website. So this is RFI. Now we will look at the real life reports of RFI and LFI. So this is the report with number 1675. Here you can see this is the case of local file inclusion which was reported to Yahoo and the bounty was of $1390. Although there is no detail of the bug but the concept was same only. Second report number is 59665. This is also a case of local file inclusion vulnerabilities in concrete 5 version 5.7.3.1. So this is also a report with same bug. So this report at 183978 is the local file inclusion vulnerability report which was reported to US Department of Defense. As I told you Hacker1 is one of the famous platform and you can see that US Department of Defense also have the bug bounty program on Hacker1. So this is great. These are some real life reports. You can also explore Hacker1.com and can look for other reports present there. So this is it for this video. Thank you and have a nice day. In this video, we are going to look at unrestricted file upload vulnerability. Video is first what is unrestricted file upload. Second, demo by using DVWA and at last third hacker one reports. Start your XAM and run the services MySQL database and Apache web server. Then go to your browser, open your DVWA and change your DVWA security to low for learning purpose. Click on file upload and you will see this screen. This is the page where person upload the file by clicking on browse and go to its own system. I have seen this hundred of times on different websites. Now I will tell you what is unrestricted file upload. Suppose a web developer did not restrict it on the extension of file that is going to be uploaded by user then this vulnerability arises. For say this is a form to upload a picture and as we know the extension of picture can be GIF or JPG or some other extension. But what if I upload some code file for say code.php instead of image file. If web application allowed to upload a code file then this is the vulnerable point. If I open editor and write some HTML file which say I'm a code file not an image file. Let's save it on our download folder by extension code.html. Now let's try to upload it. If the file uploads successfully then this is vulnerable to unrestricted file upload. This is happening because web developer did not restrict the extension of file. Let's click on upload and you can see it is uploaded successfully. So we know the destination where file successfully uploaded. Let's try to visit there. As I click enter you can see the code is executed. So this is the unrestricted file upload. Now what could be the impact of unrestricted file upload? An attacker can upload a PHP file which is nothing but I shall give you a lot of functionality like seeing a file, like creating a file, 
like renaming a file, editing a file. So this could impact a website to be defaced. An attacker can deface the website using this vulnerability also. Let's see how. Let's create a new file and start it with PHP. So what this line is doing, it is taking a parameter cmd and executing whatever be the command is passed to this parameter. For a learning purpose, let's open a terminal. So this is the terminal. If I type ls command, then this will show me what are the files presented in the directory. So this is a command. Okay. So this PHP file is going to do same. Save it in our download folder and name it shell shell.php. Fine. Upload this file from upload section. Click on browse and go to shell.php and open it. Then upload. Because there is no restriction on extension of file, then this file will get upload successfully. Now it is uploaded here. Let's open this. Now give the command cmd is equal to ls. As you can see it will show the files which are present in the directory. Now let's go back to the upload file and let's create a file which say I'm a deface page and save it. Now again upload it because I make change in code file then I'll upload that code file again which is a HTML page. Open it. And upload it now let's try to visit there see it is a deface page now the task is we have to copy this page from here to the main directory now whenever I visit DVWA it open their index page fine and this is our index page if I rename this deface page as an index page and I copy it to main directory, then whenever we open this website, the deface page will open. And this is how a website get defaced. Let's try. So again, shell.php command is equal to, first of all, I'm renaming the file cpcode.html to code to index.php. Let's move this index.html index.php to one directory back which is from uploads to hackable then another directory back from hackable to dbwa master and press enter. Now let's try to visit again our website and you can see the website gets defaced and this is one possibility of this bug. So this is a very critical bug. Now let's see real life reports. So this is malicious file upload bug and you can see through this link person able to upload a PHP file. See the image it is calling a PHP info function which shows the configuration of PHP. So this was resolved and was reported to Squire and bounty is of $2000. The another report is reported to Informatica and it was also resolved. And the third report is reported to Moneybird and the bounties of $100. I hope you get what I was trying to explain. So this is it for this video. Thank you and have a nice day. <laughs>